Hey everybody, it's your buddy Beard Grizzly. This is a primer to a series I'll be starting on here shortly called Inspirations. The point of this series is to try to give you guys some connections to weapons, armor, characters, items, etc. that aren't that fleshed out in Destiny's Mythos. The reason for this being its own video is simply because I'd like the premise of the show to stand on its own and for us to get into the content in each episode in a timely manner. So, what do I mean by this? You guys saw the title. <laughs> Let's do this. Shiro 4 is one of the Vanguard's most trusted scouts. Tasked with tracking and eliminating fallen threats, Shiro has traditionally spent most of his time making runs between Earth, Luna, and Venus, gathering intel and engaging in hit-and-run attacks on active fallen crews. Free of the burden of leadership that ties his mentor, Kate 6 to the tower, Shiro willingly aids the Vanguard whenever his skills are requested. This selflessness, combined with his talents for tracking, weapons crafting, and combat, makes Shiro an invaluable extension of the Vanguard's will beyond the city. Shiro is someone I want to know more about. Anyone that gets that close to Cade has to know a few dirty and awesome secrets, or at least a few war stories. This is effectively all we know about Shiro. He's shrouded in a lot of mystery and has a lot of secrets. Every piece of quest text and dialogue that involves his name directly is simply a discussion with your guardian throughout the story, making it hard to actually piece together any possible lore about him aside from the very direct points made in the card. Side note, in Japanese, Shiro has a few different meanings being white and castle. I can't help but feel that isn't on purpose. He is responsible for a few weapons that exist in Destiny, like Outbreak Prime, Kvastov 7G0X, and the Trespasser. The Trespasser even has his name written all over it, uh, figuratively. You are not welcome, unknown. I beg to differ. Shiro 4. Trespasser is Shiro's personal sidearm, kit-bashed over the uncounted cycles Shiro 4 spent braving the wilds beyond the city. This light and quick-fire shooter has ended more conversations than it has started, and will end many more before the last war is won. See, we, we, we don't even know who he's talking to. It's a real shame. For all we know, it could be whoever Dredgen Yor was before he turned. It could have been some fallen he was scouting, and knew our language, or he could have been talking to someone on an outer colony. My mind wanders too much, doesn't it? Ah well. Vocab check. Kit bashing means to take parts from one model to another and make it an entirely different weapon altogether. If you look over the design for Trespasser, you see bits and pieces of fallen tech, an extended clip that obviously doesn't fit the gun, a barrel like that of a smaller revolver, but more of a standard small round ramrod used on handguns today, and a laser sight? I don't know what the bottom piece is, can't seem to find reference to it, but it closely resembles one to me. The only other pieces we could pull from the Trespasser are the ornaments, which sadly don't hold any kind of flavor text on them, just a couple names. Fallen Assassin and Crucible Assassin. It seems to take the jack-of-all-trades idea a bit further, as Shiro would have been rather proficient in handling Trespasser in either circumstance, perhaps racking up a rather large body count in both Fallen and Crucible hunting, maybe aspiring after those hunter dreams of following in the Rose's shadow? Who knows? Okay, so Shiro's a pretty cool guy from what we can tell here. We know nothing of his history and I doubt we'll find out much more than this. I feel like we won't get a lot of fleshed out character information on this guy for a very long time, if ever, and that's a real shame, especially when you look at who he feels based off of and who could be the largest inspiration for the character. It's the near future. Crime, gangs, drugs, and war on the streets were commonplace for dystopian Detroit, Michigan. The mayor, left with little else to try to help the citizens he protects, turns over the police department and other assets to a company named Omni Consumer Products. Born of this partnership is a place for civilians to be under better surveillance and weed out crime called Delta City. It also gave us a man with a set of three laws. Serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. His name was Robocop. You think I'm joking? 
The design for Shiro alone almost seems to mimic a few of the standing features of Robocop. The white silver armor plating on his shoulders, arms, and body, even down to his legs, seem to suggest something similar to the clad design of Robocop's armor. Beyond that, Shiro could easily fit his normal ideals and thoughts into the three laws that Robocop serves under. Let's read them again. Serve the public trust. Public trust loosely means to protect and serve, which is a common police motto. It means to uphold the belief that the future is with the hands of the people, and without the people, there is no future. Protect the innocent. Obviously, to protect those who may not be able to help themselves against those that would prey upon them, and generally be a defender to all. Uphold the law. The law of the land, the law of light, the law of the people, whatever it may be, both Robocop and Shiro strive for balance in the lives of the people. Okay, okay, so some of you are probably going, but this can be related to any Guardian, and you're not wrong, but Shiro certainly takes the ideas of Robocop's origins a bit further. Shiro has a vast amount of sensor data at his fingertips. This allows his scouting ability to be that much better, opening doors for him to track down targets and threats much faster than normal Vanguard scouts may be able to. He's able to pinpoint where Sepex is attacking within a few seconds' time after his attack on the Iron Temple and able to track down threats rather quickly in a largely uncharted region, being the Plaguelands. Sure, it sounds like he takes the idea of serve the public trust a bit further to me. And let's not forget one of the coolest things about Shiro, his ability to work with and alter weapons with vast knowledge of kit bashing. Robocop has to improvise weapons on the go, oftentimes when his usual armament wears out their welcome. As the franchise went onward, we see Robocop's armaments also improve, which is no different from Shiro, taking pieces of different weapons to slowly improve the work he did on the Trespasser. Speaking of, how can you look at the Trespasser and not compare it to Robocop's signature gun, the Auto 9? A converted Beretta, it packs 50 rounds per clip and offers multiple ways to be fired, the most commonplace one used by Robocop being the three-round burst. The design of the Beretta 93R and the Trespasser are eerily similar, especially when you get Crucible Assassin on the gun. Also, Shiro's cape? That's a lot of House King's capes spliced together, isn't it? This is a bit of a stretch, but one of the more popularized gangs, you could say, are called the Latin Kings. What was Robocop's primary goal? Fighting crime in all forms. So there you have it. To me, it's pretty obvious Bungie ripped a lot of similarities from 80s cyberpunk to create some of the elements of Shiro, but few can really rival that of the unprecedented influence Robocop had on his design. If you guys think I'm really off the deep end here, you think there's something else that influenced the design of Shiro or others, let me know down below in the comments. And if you can't think of anything you say, but you'd like to support the channel, leave the phrase Robot Justice in the comments. Don't forget to share, dislike, or like as well. It tells me what you guys think of the content and more of what you want to see from me. Thanks for being awesome subscribers and being around the community. I've been Beard Grizzly. Keep your guns greased up and your lights strong, Guardians. This is just the beginning of inspirations. Take care.